Hello and welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Viz. Uh, sometimes people ask me for help in my Discord, and if I'm able to, I like to make little videos to answer their questions. And that's where this one came up. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, interact with a canvas and UI objects using the XR Interaction Toolkit. But before we do that, please make sure to like and subscribe so I know you like these videos and you want more. Uh, and without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here we are in Unity. We're using the 2019 LTS version. Uh, things will be different if you use 2020, so uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing we wanna do is set up the XR stuff in case you haven't uh, followed along with the initial video series. So we go into the XR plugin management and project settings and install it. Once we're in here, uh, you'll see the option for the different XR systems. I'm using Oculus, so I will check the Oculus button. All right, and once that's done, we can close that. Uh, and then we want to go into the package manager and install the XR Interaction Toolkit, which is in, currently in preview. So we'll have to uh, wait till this is ready and show preview packages. Then we'll just do a quick search for XR. And here it is, the XR Interaction Toolkit. Uh, we'll install this. Recently, Unity switched over to their Unity input system. So this box might come up asking you if you want to restart because you need to switch over to the new input system. So we'll go ahead and hit yes and Unity will restart. Okay, now that we're back, we're not done yet. We need to go back into the XR Interaction Toolkit. And because we have the new input system, we should bring in the default input action so we don't have to configure the controllers ourselves. Now that that's done, we can close this. We will create a 3D plane so that we'll have a place to stand on. We will also create an XR room scale rig. All right, so now we'll need to do a couple things here on the rig itself. We can go ahead and add an input manager. That'll give us access to the new input system. And then we'll expand this, set this to one so that we can add an input action asset and then we'll click here and we will find the one that we just installed when we uh, installed the sample inputs. So that's set up and then we'll go into the controllers for the left and right hand. We'll remove this XR controller action base because as you can see it's empty. Uh, we don't want to set that up ourselves so we can just remove this, go into this XR interaction toolkit default input actions uh, you'll see one there for the right and left controller. So since this is the left controller, let me go ahead and minimize all this. Uh, since this is the left controller, we'll just drag in this default left controller into that. And now you can see it's all filled out. We don't have to worry about setting up a controller. And then we'll do the same for the right hand. We'll delete that XR. Let me just show that so it's empty, right? So we'll delete this XR controller and then throw in the right controller here. Now that's set up. Cool, so that's our housekeeping. Now we can get to the nitty gritty. So we'll add a canvas, so a UI canvas, right? And then by default, it's set to screen space overlay, which is what you would use if you were making a 2D game. Um, but for VR, we wanna set it to world space so that it's actually in the world. It's gonna ask you for a camera, we'll use the VR camera. So we'll go and click on that and go into our scene and pick our main camera. And we're set up there. Um, we're also gonna to wanna to add something for uh, interacting with the UI. So over here, we'll just, in our canvas, we'll add a component called the Tracked Device Graphic Raycaster. And then once we're done there, we can go ahead and add a, another UI object. I'll just add a button. 
Now that we have a button on here, let's go ahead and create uh, a click event for that button. So I'll just minimize all this. I'm gonna add a script to the button itself. I'll call it button script. And then I'll open that up. Okay, and we don't need these two methods for now. Um, all we're gonna do is create a method uh, to handle the click event. So it'll be a public void uh, and we will call it uh, to click. And all it's going to do is debug log button clicked. All right, so that's all we need to do here. Now back in Unity, we need to assign that method to the click event. So we will uh, select our button here and you can see there's an on click event here and it's empty. So we'll just add something here and then we'll need to add an event or an object that has a script attached to it. So in this case, we'll just drag that same button into that. And that should give us access to all of its objects here, all of its components. As you can see, there's a button script and there's the do click event. So we'll just select that. And now whenever we click on this button, it will trigger that do click event. Uh, we need to do one more thing and it's this event system. This was created when we added the canvas. So you'll see this warning here. We're using the wrong kind of uh, input handlers. So we can just remove this one and we're going to use the XR UI input module. So now we have that in there. Before we can run this, we need to set the canvas somewhere we can see it because right now it is in world space, but it is also ginormous. So we, uh, we won't actually be able to see it. So we wanna go back to the canvas and make some modifications to it. Now that it's set to world space, we can actually decide where it's going to be. So we will set its X position to zero. We will set its Y position to one so that it's not in the ground. Um, and I'm going to scale it down to 0 0.002, 0 0.002, and leave that at one. And now if we go into the canvas, it should be right where we are and it should be a more reasonable size. So let's go ahead and push it out so that uh, it's not actually where we start. So I'm just gonna move that out there. And now let's go ahead and try it out and see what happens. All right, so here we are, we've got, uh, I'm only holding the right controller, so that's why the left controller is facing down there. Uh, but here we go. As you can see, once we hover our interactor uh, array, you can see that it turns white because we can actually interact with that button. Uh, and if I pull the trigger, you can see that it flashes because it's being triggered. And in my uh, debug log there, you can see it says button clicked. All right, and that's how we do that. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. Uh, the source code for this doesn't use any uh, licensed objects, so it will be available for download in my Patreon if you want to go ahead and become a Patreon member. Uh, so uh, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any questions, you want anything else you wanna know about. And I will see you next time. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.